Welcome to Onomatopoeia, a video series that looks at video game licensed board games that exhibit Onomatopoeia. And what Onomatopoeia is, is when a game designer attempts to create something in the physical world that replicates or mimics digital code or programming in an analog format. So, for example, if we take the Kunio Kun board game, for example, it attempts to create with physical parts and physical space on the board, the digital coding and programming that exists in the video game that dictates player positioning, player movement, and also how the ball is passed from player to player in an attempt to score goals. Now, as we all know, onomatopoeia is when the written word attempts to capture in written language a sound from the physical world around us in the most literal sense. So, for example, BAM, or MEOW, or TWEET, and to <laughs> perhaps provide a video game example. Onomatopoeia is similar to onomatopoeia, but where the differences lie is that onomatopoeia attempts to capture language from the digital world and recreate it in the most literal sense in the physical world to where instead of the player pushing buttons and manipulating a joystick or a controller, the player is physically manipulating pieces on a board that successfully imitate or attempt to imitate the digital coding from whichever video game that the board game is trying to imitate. With this first episode of Onomatopoeia, I thought it was only appropriate to look at one of the earliest, if not the first, video game licensed board game to ever be created on the planet Earth since the beginning of time. And while that game may fall into the last category of simply looking cool and being a visually appealing board game to archive in a visual medium, it does have some interesting gameplay driving it. And that board game is... Crazy Clown. Published by Bandai as part of their Party Joy series, an extensive board game line numbering in the hundreds, this game is an attempt to capture the frenzied action of the 1980 arcade hit of the same name. Crazy Climber was a coin-op released by Nichibutsu in Japan in 1980 and released by Taito America in the US in 1982. And it involves a climber going up a building that is, well... Crazy Climber. Bill out now. Nobody, no, 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 the climb is not that easy. Some of the most common hazards include windows that open and close, residents, or the mad doctors that throw objects such as flower pots, buckets of water. You have to worry about a giant condor who drops eggs and excrement. You have a giant ape falling crazy climber signs. They have the advertisement for the game in the game itself. You have a large number of hazardous objects you have to navigate to get to the goal. And if this sounds like other games some of you may be familiar with, Crazy 
Lazy Climber can be understood as a vertical platformer and is one of the earliest examples of a platformer. So without further ado, let us take a look at the Crazy Climber board game released by Bandai and published in 1981. Take an in-depth look at the components that come with the game, the rules that govern the game, how the game plays, and perhaps most important of all, how the game compares not only to the Crazy Climber franchise series by and large, but specifically to Crazy Climber 1, which is what this board game, through its artwork and its gameplay, is directly trying to imitate. What the The Crazy Climber board game from 1981 comes with, perhaps most obviously, the very, very large Crazy Climber building. The Crazy Climber building is 20 inches high by 9.5 inches wide by 2 inches deep. In addition to the Crazy Climber building, you have the Crazy Climber building foundation, which serves two purposes. First and foremost, to act as a joining mechanism to stand the building up so players can play it. In addition to this, it also houses the roulette wheel which players spin during the course of the game. In addition to the building and the building's foundation, you also have eight pawns which you manipulate throughout the game. You have first and foremost the six character pawns, and these character pawns you utilize as you are climbing up the building and avoiding hazards trying to get to the finish. In addition to that, you get the non-copyright infringing King Kong Pawn, which moves from open window to open window, barring the path forward for players to finish the game. You get the Helicopter Pawn, which moves left and right on the rooftop, waiting for the first player to reach the helicopter's landing skid and win the game. You get 40 Crazy Cards, which are utilized whenever a player spins the roulette wheel, and the roulette wheel dictates that that player pulls a Crazy Card. You have 60 play cards, which players will be using throughout the course of the game to move their crazy climbers up and down the building and left and right on each floor of the building. And finally, you have the instruction manual and the inserts in the box to hold all of the components. To prepare the game, you must set the building on the board. Insert the King Kong Pawn into the open King Kong start window on the 20th floor. Insert the helicopter into the gap on the rooftop and set it in the helicopter start position. Each player chooses their character pawn color and places it at the character start position. Shuffle the play cards well, then deal 5 to each player. Put the remaining play cards in the card tray. Carefully shuffle the crazy cards and place them face down beside the game. Gameplay starts on the ground. The player who most effectively uses their play cards to move their character pawn from open window to open window and reaches the rooftop helicopter fastest wins the game. On their turn, a player selects a card from their hand, places it in the discard pile, and moves their climber to the corresponding window indicated by the play card. There are five different play cards, each of which indicate different combinations of movements your crazy climber can do throughout the course of the game. And a majority of these player cards allow a player to move up the building anywhere between one and three stories, with the ability to move left or right one column on the crazy climber building. In addition to these cards, you have the lucky balloon card, which allows you to move five stories up, provided there is an open window that allows you to do so. You also have the parallel movement card, which allows you to move to any space along the same row or floor that you are currently on. You have the climb up card, which allows you to move to the next open window in the column you are in, regardless of the number of stories between windows. And finally, you have the disaster insurance card, which allows you to avoid a disaster if that's going to affect your Crazy Climber on the Crazy Climber building. Once a player has played his or her card and moved his or her character pawn, 
They then draw a new play card from the play deck because players must always have five cards in their hand at all times. Along the way, if you stop at or pass through floors 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, or 28, you must spin the roulette wheel and follow the directions. The roulette wheel is divided into obstacles, King Kong movement, crazy cards, and safe. When the roulette's arrow stops on a picture of an obstacle, any character or pawn in the column matching that obstacle, pictured on the 29th floor, is hit by the obstacle and knocked down to the next open window in that column. When the spinner lands in the King Kong section, it indicates whether King Kong moves up, down, left, or right. When the spinner indicates that King Kong moves up or down, you simply move King Kong to the nearest window above him or below him. However, when the spinner indicates that King Kong moves left or right along a given floor of the Crazy Climber Tower, that player must move King Kong to the most beneficial section for King Kong. Kong, even if it means knocking their own player pawn off the crazy climber tower. King Kong moves to the person or persons nearest to him. Beyond playing cards and navigating your player pawn up the crazy climber tower and navigating and avoiding hazards as they come up, throughout the course of the game. The other main component of the Crazy Climber board game are the Crazy Climber cards and provide not only additional hazards, but can occasionally yield some very powerful cards that can help change the course of the game. And there are seven different types of crazy cards you may encounter whenever you are playing the Crazy Climber board game. You have the slip down crazy cards, which cause your player pawn to fall down to the first, second, third, or fifth open window directly below you. You have the move helicopter cards, which cause the helicopter to move either one, two, three, or five spaces to the right or left, move three spaces in either direction, or move the helicopter to any space. You have the dreaded King Kong crazy card, which causes King Kong to move to the open window just above your game piece, regardless of where you are and regardless of where King Kong is on the Crazy Climber Tower. You have the Doctor Stop Crazy Climber cards, which force you to lose a turn in order to rest. You have a Crazy Climber card that causes you to discard your current hand and draw five new cards. You have the Sudden Rise Crazy Climber card. This allows you, regardless of where you are on the Crazy Climber Tower, to move to the open window just beneath the topmost player on the Crazy Climber Tower. You have the dreaded Swap Positions card, which causes you, regardless of your position in the game, to swap positions with the bottommost player on the tower. And finally, you have a card that causes you to spin the roulette wheel again and follow the instructions. That is the Crazy Climber board game, perhaps the first video game licensed board game to have ever been published on the planet Earth. Released by Bandai in 1981 and published in Japan for their Party Joy board game series. And if I do say so myself, it is probably one of the coolest video game licensed board games I have come across in my global search for every video game licensed board game that exists and adding it to the archives. However, despite it reaching almost two feet in height, it is not the tallest video game licensed board game to exist. But perhaps that board game is best saved for another video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode of Onomatopoeia.